I always had a problem with the S22 Ultra, so will the S23 Ultra fix that? I have lots of thoughts. Firstly, this isn't a review of the S23 Ultra. One, I don't get them before release, and two, I think you need a bit longer with these phones to give a more rounded opinion. So that is coming in due course. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss that. This video is a reaction to the event from a S22 Ultra owner who was incredibly cheesed off with the performance of this phone in the UK during 2022. It got better towards the end of 2022, but we were saddled with a worse version of this phone which just wasn't good enough. But yesterday, Samsung announced the brand new S23 phones, including the new S23 Ultra, and there is some very, very good news for UK people, and some other stuff that I definitely have some opinions on. We'll start with the pricing, because that's quite interesting. So the standard S23 and S23 Plus are fairly well-priced phones, actually. In the UK, they are 849 and 949, respectively. That's what they start at. But the S23 Ultra starts at £1,249. So, like a lot of flagships, it's really expensive. That said, Samsung is pretty generous when it comes to trade-in deals. So I traded in this S22 Ultra against the S23 Ultra, and they gave me £600. And on top of that, they gave me £150 off as some kind of online deal. That brought the cost of the S23 Ultra down to about 650 quid. It is worth noting that the S23 Ultra starts at 256 gigabytes of storage. The 128 gigabyte version is no more. But the big question is, should you trade in your S22 Ultra for an S23 Ultra? Is it a big enough upgrade? Starting with the design, the S23 Ultra looks like the S22 Ultra. They haven't made many changes whatsoever, which isn't a bad thing. I think this is a good looking phone. There's new colors, obviously. I went for the blue one, if you're interested. The only other difference we've noticed is that the screen isn't quite as curved on the S23 Ultra. I think that's quite a good decision. I think the curved screen on this is a bit too curved. So I'll reserve judgment until I get one, but I like the idea of that. And speaking of the display, I've got the specs here, it's pretty much the same. So it's a 6.8 inch QHD plus AMOLED. It's got that adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate, a 1750 nits peak brightness, which is less than the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, which go up to 2000 nits, although that lasts for a very short amount of time. So it's still a very lovely bright screen. The one thing it does have is the new LTPO3, which I don't know what that is, but apparently that should benefit the refresh rate. So the refresh rate should be a bit quicker and more battery efficient. There's Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the front and back, which is good for durability and that sort of stuff. But it's got the same S Pen, the same dual SIM slot. To be honest, there's not much different with the S23 Ultra at all. It's the S23 and S23 Plus that have had the biggest design changes. And I'm less interested in those phones, but they do look quite nice. Basically, they've got rid of the camera housing thing on the back, and they look a bit more like the Ultra. The other slightly weird difference between these two phones is that the S23 and the S23 Plus have bigger batteries than last year, whereas the S23 Ultra retains the same 5,000 milliamp hour battery that came in this one. Now that isn't necessarily a bad thing. This was always a good phone for me in terms of battery life. That's the one thing it did have going for it. And those additional kind of battery saving things with the display on the S23 Ultra may get even more juice out of it. But let's move on to performance. Inside this UK version of the S22 Ultra is a Samsung Exynos chip, which is terrible. It did get better towards the end of 2022, thankfully, with a few software updates, but that's irrelevant. For years, in the UK and certain other countries, we've got a worse version of these phones. Thankfully, this ends with the S23 range. Basically, all of these phones, no matter where you buy them, come with the right chip. And that chip is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is apparently 34% faster than the previous generation, and has a GPU which is 41% faster. Now, bearing in mind that we had the terrible Exynos chip in this country, we should see even bigger gains this year, which is long overdue, but really exciting. I can't wait to experience the proper Snapdragon experience in the S23 Ultra. It's really exciting. The other thing that's really exciting is what this could mean for photography. 
Samsung is clearly pinning a lot of its hopes on the camera system for these new S23 phones. They call it a pro-grade camera, whatever that means. But on the S23 Ultra, this results in a 200 megapixel sensor. That's on the standard wide lens, and it basically uses pixel binning to crush those 200 megapixels into a 12 megapixel image, which in theory should result in less noise and a sharper photo. We also get that 10 megapixel telephoto lens for those crazy zoomed in shots, which on the S22 Ultra is really impressive. Then we have the 12 megapixel ultra wide, which doubles as a macro lens, and that's been tweaked this year as well, so you can get closer to your subjects. And the selfie camera, although it has less megapixels than last time, has been improved quite a bit apparently, so it's much better with nightography as they call it. Basically, all of these cameras apparently are gonna perform better in low light situations, particularly that selfie camera. And there's new sensor and image processing across the entire range, which apparently should result in better light capture, but also less shutter lag, that will be interesting, and faster autofocus. And yes, if you want to, you can shoot at the full 200 megapixels on that main camera, although I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to. Video was a big part of this presentation as well. They even brought in Ridley Scott to do this kind of film thing with the S23 Ultra. It remains to be seen what these differences mean in real life, because for me, the iPhone has always been the better video shooter. I'll be testing the two out, don't you worry. Basically, we can now shoot in up to 8K at 30 frames per second. Last year it was 8K at 24 frames a second. And all of that new image processing and low light stuff should translate nicely to video as well. But like I say, I do need to be convinced about the S23 Ultra and its ability to shoot just as well as the iPhone. We shall see. This is going back to Samsung imminently, the S23 Ultra will take its place, and there's two things I can't wait to check out. The first thing is that Snapdragon chip. Finally, there's no more Exynos in this country. That should make a huge difference to performance. And secondly, the camera. I wanna see how good those photos are. I wanna see if all of that processing power sorts out the shutter lag on this. That's another issue with this S22 Ultra. Although it takes lovely photos, most of the time. The shutter lag is a pain in the backside. You basically press it and then you have to wait for the photo to be taken. Again, that doesn't happen with the iPhone. So surely with the new Snapdragon and all this clever new image processing stuff, that should be a thing of the past. And then I really would like to see how the S23 Ultra stacks up against the iPhone 14 Pro Max when it comes to video. I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro Max for video more and more in this channel. And if I could potentially use the S23 Ultra as an alternative, that would be very interesting. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, you won't miss my review if you do that. And in the meantime, keep watching for a link to my last updated review of the S22 Ultra. I think you'll find that interesting.